from somewhere below the surface of the Midwest. In the studio wing of the adult fans of Nerf Secret Bunker, this is the Avon Show. With your hosts, Mr. K and Mr. S. Welcome to the Adventures of Spider-Man. No, no, no. Welcome to the Adult Friends of Nerf Show. Today we're talking about... Dirt Tag! <laughs> That's right, Dave. Today we're going to be talking about Dart Tag. One of our favorite things to do when we're bored. Absolutely, because, I mean, there is no better way to play with Nerf than play Dart Tag. It's good stress relief, too. Absolutely. So we're going to talk about the dark tag stuff, the blasters, the accessories, the whole kit and caboodle because, well, there's a lot of stuff out there. There is a lot of stuff. Uh, dark tag has had, uh, you know, it's, it doesn't range back as far back to the be as the beginning of Nerf. It's not the oldest thing that they've come up with. No, but it is by far one of our favorites. It's kind of a no-brainer, really. I mean, they've had darts here, or blasters here and there that would come with Velcro tip darts, tagger darts, but up until, like, early 2000s, there was no such thing as actual dart tag. Which leads me to these boys. Yep. These are pretty much the first, first uh, dart tag things to come out. I mean, um, along with uh, a couple other blasters that all came out in the, in the same year. 2004, right? Ish. We're trying to remember our facts, but... 2004. 2004. That's why we take notes. Yes. Mag Strike is cool. We've talked about it before. Probably not going to go too much into it. Um, ten round clip. One of the first clip blasters. And it's cool that it was... That it's, that its first iteration was Dark Tank which is uh, different from pretty much all of the now current clip system. Well, now it's clip system. Back then it was just the mag strike. Um, but it, it, this will fire any kind, any type of dart you put in it. Yeah, it's, really. it doesn't fire streamlined so well. But I mean, no, but what does yeah. besides clip system dart? You know, yeah. yeah. So this will, this, it came with tagger darts. It'll take suckers. It'll take whistlers. The, all the new mag strikes come with whistlers. Um, but it started out with dark tag. Yep. And the dark tag version actually started out with two clips instead of the one that you get with today's so mag strike. They, they they gave you a better deal back then. Yep. And with the mag strikes, you also got one of the bibs. Now with the first bib, <laughs> you got the double sided. They were two sided. We I kind of liked that. Uh, it was it was kind of a sandwich board thingy. Yeah, they worked a lot better than the bibs that they put out today. These were, yeah, these were more like sandwich boards where you had a front and a back. Yeah. You know, um, and these were easier for bigger guys and stuff to put on because you could just let them hang. You just let them hang, yeah. Yeah, with, with today's bibs, you really just got to kind of tie them on as best as you can. Make the best out of it. Yep. But uh, our first foray... Oh, I the last one. You lost a dart? Uh-huh. <laughs> Our first foray into dart tag was with the hyperfires. We bought a two-player set of the hyperfires, and you have the blue one. I have the blue. I one. have the red one. I have the blue one. And you know, this is really the the, the kind of the thing that started it all. And this was our our very first Nerf purchase, and it started our collections. It started this whole idea, really. Um, so, hey, nostalgia. Hyperfire, I don't know, it's got a useless tactical rail pretty much up here. Yeah, I mean, the Dark Tank line never really used the dark, or the tactical rails much of... Which, much to me, all. has always been kind of a detriment. I mean, they there have been a couple blasters here and there that have had tactical rails on them, um, but with no Dark Tank specific accessories for them, they're really kind of useless, unless you wanted to use your end strike stuff with it, but you can't use it in like sanctioned tournaments or anything, so there's no point to it. Yeah, and re and really they're kind of useless except for maybe the dart holder for the barrel break. Which came out way later. It should have came out with the hyperfire, really, to make it yeah. useful. 
So yeah, then uh, we got the, the strike fire. Strike fire. Also called the crossfire in some time or some point. Um, it's the only blaster with a reverse tactical rail on it, so it means that you can attach it reverse. to another so blaster. So you could you could put this on the tactical rail on another blaster. I'm gonna grab an example here. Which it's one thing that I kind of wish they would do more often on small blasters. You know, maybe like a, a jolt with a reverse tactical rail, if they could manage that. I don't know. It just seems kind of... You can do it like this. Yay! I don't know. But, uh, yeah, it's it's a little bit more useful than having a tactical rail. Because, you know, with the reverse tactical rail, you can put it on stuff. But uh, the strike fair that I got came with a vest and psh, the buckler. Psh, psh, psh. I'm um, buckling. Yeah, you could use the buckler as a shield or whatever, but I think it was meant to be more as a targeting surface for gameplay. Or smacking somebody in the face. <laughs> yeah, maybe. So that's the kind of the uh, that, that that's what kicked off Dark Tag. There was nothing before these, and now it's kind of it's it's growing. It's not as big by any means as the End Strike line. But um, I mean, there's they get, right now they got a solid concept and a, call, a solid design theory to separate it from End Strike. It's about time because pretty much all the other, all of the previous before the current generation of Dark Tag, they all kind of resembled End Strike stuff, but they were differently colored. Um, they they just never fit with the End Strike stuff, which were, they were never really intended to. But they were so similar, it, it felt like too much of a um, too much of the same. Yeah, really. Yeah, and. Throughout the Dark Tag lineup, they've had multiple colors. You know, first it was blue and red. Then it was and yellow then it was and green, or orange and green. Orange and green. I now hated the orange and now green. Now it's what is it? It's, it were these... The opposite ones were orange, right? Yeah, the ones that I have are orange. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But before these guys came out, came out with the Spider-Man Blaster in 2006. Now this little guy is, is actually pretty well sought after, even though it, it only popped up at in stores for a little while in a double pack with uh, Venom. the Venom Blaster, which is basically the same setup as the the vest, the vision gear, and the blaster, only it's a different color. I should have brought mine. I wasn't thinking. But it's cool. I, I, I've always wanted to try and change it. I've used ropes and, and other things to try and make it so you can mount it on the top of your arm and flick your wrist down to shoot it. More like a uh, like an Iron Man missile launcher or something like that, but I never got it to work the way I wanted it to, so I just kind of use it. Yeah, I kind of wish meant. they would come out with more of these types of types of things instead of those little crappy plastic missile blasters. <laughs> yeah, those things are just always a disappointment. Well, but the Spider-Man Venom set really cool, hard to find now though. Oh yeah, it's definitely hard to find because it's it's a nice little blaster to have. You know, you it can is. Put it on your wrist. And yeah, it's like you you got a sidearm always on your arm. <laughs> so yeah, so that came out, and then these guys came out. The Desert Eagle looking one, as Matt calls it. <laughs> Which is the Storm Fire, and the... Fury Fire. Fury Fire. See, I, I kind of remember this one, I don't really remember this one. But this is one of my favorite ones. This was the first one that I ever owned that you could actually, yeah, like Sarah Connor, that shit. And, uh... It's just cool. Ten rounder. It's got dart storage and is it ten? I'm pretty sure it's ten. Yeah, and it holds a holds a dart in the bottom. Um, solid design. Precursor to the barricade, in my mind. Yeah, it, it is a pretty decent precursor to that. And they're now coming out with one for the GI Joe movie that is red. It's like the Snake Eyes blaster or something like that. It has a little targeting dealy on the top. I'm interested to get my hands on it just to see what that accessory is. <laughs> Your dart came out a little early. It happens sometimes. I liked this one too. It took me a little while to warm up to this one because of the, um, the there's a gap between the uh, the body and where you pull it down to prime it. And I really didn't like it at first, but after using it for a while in our in our indoor dart battles, I mean, it's really slick. Instead of having to pull on it to just use your finger, it's ready to go, and you can shoot it all day long. Um, Stormfire is pretty cool. Yeah, I, I, I like it quite a bit. It's It feels good in the hand. Mm -hmm. It has a decent form factor to yep. it, and it just kind of looks like 
a Desert Eagle balance. A nice pistol blaster. I kind of wish they would change this up and give it maybe a end strike look instead of dark tag. Re-release it. Either way, it's a solid blaster and a good addition to the dark tag line. It's a shame that uh, blasters like this didn't make it into the current generation, uh, but the current generation is just cool as all get out. Uh, total redesign. Um, but before we get to that, we got the little the little guy to talk about. He gets forgotten because he's so small. But he's uh, the Eliminator. Um, kind of a take on the reflex, just a kind of a, I, I call it a redesign of the reflex. Yeah, I mean, really it is a redesigned reflex, because the reflex came before this guy, and yeah. this guy is his dark tag equivalent. The only real difference between the two is the little thing that pulls out of the handle here, uh, gives you extra dart storage, and it elongates the handle a little bit for, for adult hands. Your pinky can wrap around that really nicely instead of... Um, when it's pushed in, Pinky kind of lingers out there in the distance. But with the uh, thing pulled down, it's nice and easy to grab onto. Absolutely. And this one doesn't have the tactical rail like the... the like the actual reflex does. Yeah. yeah. Because, well, I mean, it's not that useful on the reflex anyways, you know, because it's such a, a small blaster. But Oh, come on, man. You can trick that out with like a long strike scope or something like that. Like, yeah, look at my pistol. Yeah. Um, but the, the eliminator came also in not it came with the hyperfire first in a special set and then it came out with the dart tag target. I like this target. It's a, it's a really nice kind of wall hanging target. It's a good versatile little thing. And as we talked about in one of our previous episodes, this base right here, when you hang it on the wall, you can hang the blasters on these ends here, and it's got good dart storage. Um, but if you wanted to use it, say you got a dorm room or something, you know, got a lot of wall space, you can take this off and flip it around, and it turns into like a, a table-mounted um, target, nice and stable and everything. Absolutely. The only problem that I have with it is it's so damn springy. Yeah, yeah. But we forgot. We almost forgot one thing. We almost forgot the flag. Now the flag came with the stormfire in a set. Uh, two stormfires the flag and uh, vests and vision gear and this is it's was the only way unfortunately with well I shouldn't say unfortunately uh, one of the one of the good things about the dart tag and one of the bad things about dart tag is that some most of them tend to come two in a pack now with the latest iteration it's becoming less and less uh, the norm since they're not doing the, the color team duels anymore really They've stopped doing the, um, the multiple blaster packaging, but they've upped the quality of the blasters a little bit. Yeah. So, back to the flag. Um, did we really want to say much more about the flag, really? I mean, we talked about it in the accessories episode. Yeah, we did talk about it in the accessories episode. So, if you want to get some more information on it, you can check out our accessories episode for some more information on that and some of the other accessories the that we have. Stuff we have on the table here. Um, this came out... Soon, well, we're kind of right around this time as well, uh, still in the orange and green era. Yep. We don't talk about this thing much. Um, nothing against Nerf, we just didn't really like it. Uh, it just didn't... It's kind it, of a hassle. It's kind of a hassle. You got your darts flopping all over the place. Um, fast load speed, if you're, if you're really a dart tag aficionado, try it out. Um, it's not too uncomfortable. I mean, I'd wear it. But I just don't like having darts on it. So. Yeah, and it's, I think it's just another surface for darts to stick on when you get shot. Yeah. Probably, again, why it's not really used. Yep. So now do we get to move on to the current generation? Yes, now Yay, we move on to the current generation. Yay, the current generation. generation. Sharp shot. Sharp shot. Sharp shot. First one, well, among the first to come out. Yeah, it's, it's really nice that they they, all, they came out with all of these blasters virtually at the same time, with exception to the the newer the newer ones. Well, yeah, this is the next the next year's yeah. stuff. So my only problem with this, and I can't really even call it a problem, it's just an accessory that came with it that I don't like. Was a little carabiner thingy that came on here. Um, it's supposed to be like an easy breakaway. Um, carabiner, you clip it onto your belt, clip it onto the blaster, it's got like a, a ball and socket joint that you clip it together. 
uh, and you can just pull it off and you're, you're ready to go. The problem is that ball and socket joint is really, really tight and you, you may rip your belt loop off before you get them disconnected. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, Sharpshot is cool itself. It's a good blaster. There's a new one coming out yep. this year. The new one coming out is even better than the old one. This one suffered from poor performance, unfortunately. Um, uh, this one in particular that I have does have poor performance. Um, I think it might be because of the shape of the air, the new air style, the new style air restrictor that they have in it. Um, it's it's like two half circles instead of the four prongs that they normally three prongs. are. Three prongs. <laughs> Whatever. Um, shows you how many I took up. <laughs> um, but yeah, the new one has uh, a blue dart holder or blue painted dart holder, and also a, a blue trigger. And that's how you can tell the difference between the two. Um, the new one is supposed to be loads better than this one. It's supposed to fire farther and more accurately. So we're hoping that has more of the scout style innards. Yeah. Yeah. And it also comes. It comes by itself. But this guy also comes in a two-player set. This is the, like the only uh, one to come in a widely distributed two-player set, and it comes with uh, two dart take shirts, not the jerseys, just like a the regular other, sleeveless vest type shirts. of shirt. Um, I haven't gotten any of those yet, but I plan on getting them once the new style. Well, yeah, well, it wasn't really they 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 did that before with with this sharp shot, but really with the performance issues and everything, it's really better to wait until the new ones come out and get that two-player set, because you'll just have better blasters. Yep. Around the same time with that one, we got the Speedload 6, which is one of my personal favorites. This thing is just a beast. It's friggin' heavy. It's, um, it's cool. It's got that, uh, that nifty internal clip, uh, internal clip system. Uh, that they started with the new dart tag line holds six rounds loads really easily um, The only major problem with the internal clip system is that they, they do tend to jam a little bit and when they jam It's not a pretty picture. I've uh, I've had a couple of my newer uh, Darts ruined in this blast this blaster in particular um, from like if you don't cock it smoothly there's a chance that it'll jam and it'll like pink the dart kind of like that and you gotta try and pull it out among all of the bits and bobs inside of here and it's it's complicated and it doesn't really do very well for the dart. Uh, the, and actually the the um, Speedlo 6 and the Quick 16 do come in a two player set. Really? If you, if you can find it. Um, I believe that they're only at like Sam's Club and Costco's, okay. Um, so so larger stores like Club that, stores. club stores. Uh, they both come uh, two in a pack with vision gear, darts, and I believe they all come with the shirts, the shirts. not the jerseys, not the jerseys, but the shirts. The shirts. Yeah. And these are these are cool. These came out around the same time as these. Um, also, the the shirts come in the two player sets and then you can buy the jerseys separately. They come in red and blue or orange and blue. Um, and they're they're really comfortable. I think I said this before in one of our other episodes. I'd wear this thing out on the town. I mean it, it's it's a nice little shirt. Uh, and it looks cool and it's got two, three spots on the front for and darts the and then one big one in the back. Nothing on the sleeves or anything, but you know this is your kill zone right here. Quick sixteen, similar to the Speedload 6, it's pretty much just the same thing, just, you know, the Raider version. Yep, and uh, both the Speedload 6 and the Quick 16 have Slam Fire. Slam Fire! It's a little uncomfortable on the Speedload 6, but you can definitely do it. I've done it multiple times and have ruined a couple darts doing it. Yeah, yeah, it does up, up the chance of ruining a dart. Because, you know, you don't notice that it jams and all of a sudden... Yeah, it's, yeah, it's halfway in there and you're crying because you lost a dart. Um, I prefer the the speed or the quick 16 over the speed load six because I like the design of the Raider. I like the way this thing feels, even sans butt stock. Yeah, the, um, the really the only thing I don't like about this is they, they could have either put a, a a stock on it, or they could have you know designed this so that it, it didn't look like that because I think that's just awkward. When we first started seeing images for this for the quick 16, I honestly thought that they were going to start doing. Uh, 
butt stocks and barrel extensions and stuff for the dart tag line got me really excited. And then when it came out and I saw this thing, I was I, I kind of felt like they were playing a cruel joke on me. <laughs> but I forgave them, and it's all good now. Um, the new dart tag stuff is just cool. I love the redesign. I love the new color scheme. They stopped doing the dual color blasters, and they're just doing dual color shirts instead. Yeah, I mean, because I mean, you are looking at the blaster when you're playing with somebody, but you're also going to be looking at their jersey, and their jersey will be what determines their team. Exactly. And uh, there's also different color vision gear, too, with the new lineup. So, I mean, you could really have one team have one color vision gear and the other team have another color. Yep. Although I find it strange that there are, there is orange vision gear, but there isn't blue vision gear. I thought that, do they just have orange and white? It's orange, white, black. I haven't seen the black ones. I've seen the black ones. Hmm. What color do you have? You have white. I have white. Yep, I have, the, I have the white ones. So the Swarm Fire was our first ever battery operated dark tank blaster. Um, as I put that back on backwards. Uh, this thing's kind of a beast. It's it's kind of a little needler machine gun, really. Yeah, it is pretty cool. I mean, it just feels kind of beefy and, and badass when you're yeah. running around with it. I like that you can take the buttstock off of it and turn it into a giganto pistol, but I I never play with it that way. Yeah, I it's mean, just more comfortable. Like yeah, this. it's more comfortable because you can hold it up to your shoulder. Yeah, um, you know, and, and it, it would have been nice if they would have had a, uh, a stock that you could put on other blasters. Ooh, another chance for expandability. But. Uh, yeah, they, they made it so that it only works on this one, yep. you know. That pretty much rounds out 2011. Yep, the first Dart initial tag. release of the Dart Tag lineup. Yep. Or the, the initial release of the new the style. The new style Dart Tag lineup came in 2011. Uh, we never really talked about the NDTL. No, not really. Um, unfortunately, they aren't doing the NDTL this year for whatever reason they never really said. I would assume it's not very cost. Well, effective. that and beyond, to, to, to be honest with you, after after last year's tournament, um, which I, I didn't really watch, I just saw the, I, I get excited when uh, Dark Tag season comes around because I always look at the entry forms to see what kind of stuff you have to do and if they've finally uh, decided to do an adult bracket, which they never do. Um, but last year's, it was just it was just kind of janky to me a true tournament like if you're going to go through to have like a worlds or a nationals or any or something like that um don't have kids write an essay to become part of a team let them make their teams do regional tournaments and and have kids that know each other build the camaraderie and you know lo locally turn uh compete locally and then build them up to worlds like a regular tournament I, it just was poorly put yeah. together in my mind you just you for for something like this if they really want to turn it into more of a, of a sport type thing you really need those brackets yes and you need those brackets in order to to have teams battle against each other to move up in rank yeah. and I think it's it's more uh, more important that you reward skill and not writing ability yeah, really. I mean, this is it's it's dark tag, not dark write an essay. Yeah, and and you know, with doing it with with brackets, it allows you to uh, uphold you know teamwork and strategy. Yep, it builds and, community because you have more of a more of a uh, invested fan base. I, there's all sorts of pluses to it. Yep, and you know, you could have teams that. Are even sponsored by like local companies, local companies or whatever. Help small businesses promote themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Do it. The, do it the same way that professional athletes do, but uh, do it. For, do it just for fun. Yeah. Do it for fun. Not 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 for profit, you know? but because you like it. I mean, it's it, it, yeah. it'd be the same thing as putting up a competitive dodgeball league. It's it's nice it's to get that trophy, fun. and and in the end, you know, you could offer a, a monetary prize, but you know, that's have for the a roaming trophy. Yeah. Yeah. Giant dart. Uh, Giant dart. When you press it, it goes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, try and capture the sound the dart makes when it hits the surface. Sucker dart, preferably. When the sucker dart hits glass, that that sound. Yeah, that's what we need. 
So on to yes, no on, no off. No on off, on off switch. This um, is the Speed Swarm. Speed Swarm. Um, this is the first Dart Tag Blaster to come out in 2012. Yep. Um, yeah, it feels like ages ago this came out. I know, it right? And it's only been a couple months. We've had this thing for a little while, um, but uh, I mean. It feels like forever ago that it came out, and it was only just a couple months ago, really, that it hit retail stores. Um, I like it. It's fun. Um, it's, it's a mini swarm fire. It really is. I mean, all things considered, I mean, they're pretty They're pretty similar. Half the ammo capacity, but you got uh, more portability. A lot more portability. This thing takes four or six? Six. Six AA batteries. Yeah. Versus this thing taking six C, six C batteries. So smaller mechanism, smaller motor, smaller battery load, lighter weight. Uh, all the pluses. Uh, yeah, it's only got 10 rounds in it, but in the heat of battle, if I have to choose between this or that, I'll take that all day long. Because you can reload those 10 darts a lot faster. A lot faster than trying to get them all in here, and it's just less weight. You can move faster. Uh, makes you more maneuverable. No on-off switch though, so I mean, when you're running, you gotta watch not to hold down, not not to pull the trigger, or you know, you'll be turning around to go grab the dart you just fired into your foot. Um, yeah, it's got nice little uh, strap holes here. Nice big one, right, right here too. For um, I think this one might be, it'll probably still work, but it may be a little constricting for the bandolier. But you could fit both of the clips from the bandolier on here and be able to carry it around a little easier too. That's kind of Or you can throw your finger in there and get it stuck. <laughs> Only if you have big thumbs and even my big thumbs don't get stuck in there. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, this is the only one that's been released so far this year, but we've already seen some word uh, or seen some pictures and stuff of the next one to be released. Yeah, and that's and the... Snapfire 6. Snapfire 6. This thing looks really cool. It's not battery operated, but you, there, there's there's no priming mechanism to get it ready to go. Uh, you literally pull the trigger. It's got a really long trigger pull, but that primes the blaster and fires it at the same time. Yep. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe it's the first one ever to not have some sort of priming mechanism that also is not battery powered. It stands to, to prove that. I, I haven't heard of any other ones. So this will be another innovation that they're that they're bringing in. It's good that they're that they're trying some of this stuff out with Dark Tag because uh, Endstrike's been getting the experimentals forever. Yep, it's it's nice to see something new and interesting in Dark Tag. You know, yeah. get people to pick it up and try it out. Yeah, another cool thing about the Snapfire is a little. No, is it a knob? It's a knob. On it's the bottom. a knob on the bottom that you twist, and it'll basically um, switch your blasters. Intensity, we'll say. You can uh, you can go for high speed of fire, low distance, or you can go for slower fire speed, but a greater distance. Yep, it's it's a great innovation uh, in any blaster to have that kind of adjustability so that people can get out of it what they want. Right, exactly, exactly. Would have been cool if we could have seen something like that from the uh, Stampede, where we could have had more of a faster full auto and then a slower, like, one shot per trigger pull. Yep. Yeah. But with, with this, it allows them to experiment and put it out there and see if people like it. And if they do, they can always put out more blasters with this kind of feature. Exactly. I think that's why battery-operated blasters are starting to really take off now, because people are realizing how slow it really is to have to prime your blaster before you fire instead of just turning a switch or pulling a trigger and your stuff just goes. Yep. Yeah. And, and really, they don't you know, run through batteries nearly as much as people Not as much as I expected to. I mean, I've had some of these blasters. I usually store my stuff without batteries in them, but every once in a while I'll be going through my collection and I'll pull a trigger and, oh, hey, that, there's still batteries in that one. And it's been a few months since I've used it, and the batteries are still fine. No. Yeah. So I don't know what they're doing, but apparently they're doing something good and not wasting battery life on us. Do we want to show off all of the different bibs that you have because man you got a collection of bibs. I do have a collection of bibs because I used to give bibs away with every single blaster and now they don't. <laughs> but uh, so yeah we have the sandwich board blue design. We have the sandwich board 
red design. Gimme. Which Velcro are Velcro is a wonderful thing. Which are this, basically the same different colors. Yep. Uh, and then we have the orange bib and the green bib. I do have two greens. One's just on my Master Chief cardboard cutout. Um, but yeah, then the orange, the orange bib, and then of course we have the Spider-Man bib. And I think there's another bib that I don't have. I, if I, I think I might have one different one than you. Um, kind of one that's I think between the sandwich board and this and and and, and this iteration, um, but I'd have to go through my collection. I kind of tried to weed some of these out. And you know, if you guys haven't figured out right now why we call them the bib, um, you've either never owned one or you just can't can't visibly see how small these things are. Um, we have to stress that the bibs and stuff are really made for kids. It wasn't until they came out with this that they were thinking about the more grown up crowd. Um, so if you have some of these and you use them. Kudos to you, um, but uh, we just can't. We just can't make them work. No, they just they just don't work as well as the jerseys do. Yeah. But yeah, so that that's all we have for for Dark Tag as of now. As in, until the new stuff comes out, we're waiting very intently on the new Sharp Shot and the Snapshot. Snapfire. Snapfire. Snapshot. Taking cameras. I don't know. <laughs> so yeah. Um, I would like to say that Darte has a bright future, but with them canceling this year's NDTL, it's uh, I'm hope I'm hoping that they're just retooling it for next year when they come back in full force. That's what I'm hoping. That's what I'm hoping. And they kind of really told everybody, we're not doing it this year. Go out and do it your way for a year. Um, so hopefully, people will. Have a fun summer playing dart tag casually with their friends. Maybe post some awesome videos online on our Facebook or you know stuff like that. And maybe we'll get Hasbro going on some of our ideas that we have out there. And maybe we'll all work together as a community to make dart tag a better thing. But those are lofty hopes. Yep. You know, if Hasbro doesn't decide to do it next year, we will. We'll organize dart tag. Adult fans of Nerf Adult Dart Tag League? Yes. Yes. Even though we're up here in the Midwest, I'm sure we can make it happen. Our fingers grow long. We can spread. I'm excited. I That, that, that was an uh, idea that I brought up a while ago, but I never thought that this yokel would actually go through with it. So, yes, A-F-O-N-A-D-T-L, here we come. Yes, it is that always is, something that we can do. Yes, it is. It is. It'll be fun. If, if Hasbro doesn't want to do it, We'll take care of it. We'll we'll make Dart Tag into something that they couldn't even see it. We'll make them proud with our awesomeness. Absolutely. So until next time, we're the adult fans of Nerf. Keep nerfing. <laughs>